I'm going to ask each of the panelists to give a takeaway or a, a take-home message on this, and I'm going to end with Bob about what does the patient, <coughs> consumer, public, voter, whatever we're going to call him or her, think about it. Stuart, the takeaway message. What is, what's the one thing people should hear so from let us? Me, let me go back to what you asked in the book. One of the things that we've learned in Massachusetts, even though we don't have a hard and fixed budget, by, imp by sending out a clear message that we don't want overall spending to grow by more than our growth in our state income, and holding every provider and every payer in, in principle, it's not that we regulate them, but if they exceed those rates, we make it, we put it out in the newspaper, we call them in, we talk to them, and in fact, they are listening. We need more of that. We need to create, if not a real budget, quasi or budget that says we have limits. And then within that, to try to find redo delivery system to provide higher quality and to get rid of services that really don't add that much. But if you don't have that budget or quasi budget, what you do is swishing money around. So we need to do that. And we're trying to do that in Massachusetts in a non-regulatory way. And, and, if, and I'd like to see the federal government begin to do more of that itself. So it's budget, value, and public shaming. That seems to be the approach. Kate. If you're not gonna, I don't want to be a regulator anymore. I did that when I was 25. I'm not doing that <laughs> at, at my. You're still 25 now, <laughs> at heart. OK, Kate. Uh, so I think my takeaway is that prices matter, but quantities matter too. And we don't live in a fictional world of unlimited resources, as lovely as that would be. So we need to have a serious conversation about who's making the decision about resource allocation and set up a system of pricing that's consistent with healthcare dollars being devoted to the places where they're improving health the most and where there's access across the income distribution that we find acceptable as a society. Okay. Doug. My takeaway is that this is a big problem of healthcare spending in this country. And ultimately, we will need to make significant changes. But we should not wait for some single big bang perfect solution. This will be an incremental effort. And when the people you polled, Bob, said they don't think this will really do it or that will really do it, well, nothing will do it alone, nothing that we would find acceptable as a society. So we need that. But the lesson of that is not to do none of those things. It is to do a lot of those things. That's where I'll leave it. And Bob, where's uh, the public? Uh, so uh, one contribution here, uh, lowering the rate of spending uh, has incredibly little impact on public thinking. And so just two points is uh, we cut taxes. Nobody believes their employer gave it to them in wages. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 we have had periods of high profits in companies. Turns out people don't believe the employer gives it uh, to them. So slowing the rate from 4% to 3% alone. What if people who really want to have to look for wins, things that are very visible, that this is actually cheaper for you as a human being. Now, it doesn't mean you're not interested in the aggregate. We have no wins in this. This aggregate number doesn't have an impact, and people don't believe they get it back. So you have to do this. It was in like the 2008 economic calendar, downturn. You have to show, Mr. President, some of these places don't close. You have an aggregate. Some of these places didn't close. They didn't lay off 10,000. We need some wins here where average people say they actually contain this thing. And I trust you to do the, do the rest. But we haven't had big wins where individuals see this happen. 